What's happening, my friends? My name is Nathan. Welcome to Motorcycle Training Concepts. So in this video, we're going to talk about two things, the first of which being health issues and the second one being how the heat affects the area around you. So to start off, I want to talk about dehydration, which is pretty much the precursor to all of the other health issues I'm going to cover today, like heat cramps, for example. You get dehydrated whenever your body loses more fluids than you take in. And when you're sweating a lot, you're going to experience things like heat cramps, which is when you sweat, you're losing a lot of salt and other minerals and it's going to cause tightness in your muscle groups especially your legs your quads your abdomen when you start to experience that you can get relief through drinking not only water but mineral water or any kind of like electrolytes you, you want to get those minerals back you want to get that that sodium and that potassium back that you're losing one step further from that though you're going to experience heat exhaustion heat exhaustion is whenever you're you're overheated and your body can't cool down fast enough when you're experiencing heat exhaustion you might get dizzy you might get nauseous um, fatigued, mentally fatigued as well. So your reaction times to things are gonna be a lot slower and your critical thinking skills are gonna diminish. So if something surprises you or should surprise you, it may take you longer than it should to recognize that threat. Another symptom of heat exhaustion could be fainting. It should go without saying you can use your imagination on the consequences of passing out on a motorcycle, but they're not good. And then if you continue to overheat and then your internal body temperature reaches 104 or higher, then you're gonna go into heat stroke. And the symptoms here can include confusion, uh, seizures, and an even higher risk of fainting or loss of consciousness. All of that being said, hydrate. Drink a lot of water, especially when it gets hotter. And then it's important to choose what clothing you wear so that you can mitigate a lot of the, the health issues that can come with that. So they make wet vests so that you can kind of get wet, throw in the freezer for a little bit, or even room temperature water because the the wind that's traveling is going to be a lot cooler on that that vest than it would be otherwise you're going to notice whenever it gets really hot and you're still like let's say springtime whenever the day starts off really cold but then it throughout the day it gets a lot hotter and you're still wearing your morning clothes your sweater your hoodie underneath your jacket and you got these layers on for the morning cold but then it gets no longer morning cold and that's when you can get a lot of these heat problems and heat symptoms so personally i just keep extra space in my backpack if i need to take some layers off i can do that and i'll have a place to put that so hydrate Stay hydrated, always have some more water on you. They make motorcycle backpacks that have bladder inserts so that you can have a hose with a line of water at any time while you're riding. Personally, I just keep a water bottle back there. And since I'm primarily riding in the city, I can always stop at a gas station and cool off under the umbrella, get, get a drink of water from there, but pretty much gauge where you're at and what, what's available to you. And if you need to pick up a, a bladder, for example, you can do that. And then obviously making sure that you are dressing appropriately so that the, the hotter it gets, the less heavy layers you have on you. So aside from health issues, there are some environmental issues that heat can cause. And the first one that could be tire blowouts. So with the heat, your the PSI in your tires are gonna expand a bit. Adversely to the winter where your PSI will contract and you'll lose a lot of your pressure in your tires quicker in the winter time. In the summertime, your tires can expand and if you overinflate them prior, they've got a higher risk of having a blowout, having a flat, while you're riding. So being aware of that risk of your tires betraying you essentially, maintaining your bike becomes another priority there too. So in extreme circumstances with extreme heat, uh, that could lead to things like pavement buckling. So the, the pavement itself can expand and start to crumple and that'll cause issues for you. If you've got a lot of tar snakes where you live, uh, when it gets super hot, that, that change in material can start to become real gooey. And if you ride on it for too long, or let's say you make a really hard turn and your tire slips on a tar snake, that's a very common thing to happen to motorcyclists during the summer months. The next two environmental hazards kind of go hand in hand, but I want to separate them just a little bit. So the next one I want to talk about is air pollution. So with the heat, it's going to bring out a lot more air pollution than you're probably used to. Longer exposure to heat is going to worsen your air quality. And Bicyclists, motorcyclists, people with like health issues, lung issues are gonna experience this the most. Car drivers, I mean, you're insulated. If it gets super hot and you're just really uncomfortable with the way that you feel outside, there's always that option too. But yeah, with the worsened air, air quality, that leads me to the next one, which is it's gonna increase traffic congestion. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because in the summer people want to travel, people want to get out of the town, and people want to go outside more just to get suntanned or whatever, I don't know. But for whatever reason, people like going outside when it's super hot. And it always, without fail, I feel like I get stuck in traffic in the heat. And being stuck in traffic with the heat is gonna expose you to not only the worsened air quality of the heat itself, but then you've got exhausts, then you've got the increased heat from the other cars. So now it's even hotter than it should be. If you're in a state where lane filtering is legal, Arizona just passed that recently and it has been wonderful. I'm not usually the type of person to just lane filter just to lane filter, but if there's a long line of cars, maybe there's a train coming and that train, I, I can see that train for a mile out and a long line of cars and no one's turned their engine off. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the front of that line. I'm not gonna be a few cars back or 
12 cars deep just breathing in all of their exhaust. So if you're in a state that can lane filter, that's gonna become wonderful because you can keep that air flow going. Consider what type of bike you've got. If you've got an air-cooled bike or a liquid-cooled bike, air-cooled bikes, you gotta keep those things moving. And being stuck in traffic is not healthy for those kind of bikes. So back up to the top, we got health issues. So dehydration is gonna cause a lot of stuff. So heat cramps being one of those, if you start to feel that, that achingness that your muscles kind of tensing up you're sweating a lot you're losing a lot of salt and minerals so this would be a good time to pull over drink some water hydrate again make sure that you've got plenty of fluids in you if you got to get a sports drink that can hydrate you and give you some electrolytes but if you continue to ride with those heat cramps it's going to be distracting it's going to be uncomfortable and it if your mind's focused on things other than the road, that could be hazardous in and of itself. And when it gets worse than that, you've got things like heat exhaustion. So you get confused and dizzy and nauseous and fatigued. And at that point, your, your mental clarity is not gonna be there. So critical thinking skills, decision-making skills, threat recognition is gonna be all delayed. When debris or other cars or something should surprise you and get you into that red stage to move, it's gonna take you longer than it should to get there and it could cause you to crash. If you get to the point of heat stroke, you've missed a lot of signal cues leading up to that where you could have pulled over and hydrated, where you could have taken a break. And when you get to heat stroke on a motorcycle while traveling, that could be the end of you. As long as you're staying hydrated, you're making sure that your health is secure. Now you need to make sure that your mental clarity is there so that you can focus on how heat affects the surroundings around you. So maintain your bike, keep your tires good and pressured, but not over pressured because heat could lead to a blowout. So the road could be buckling around you. You could have tar snakes being gooey. Keep in mind that, yeah, the heat can make the asphalt super sticky and grippy and your turns can be a lot better when it's hot outside there could be uneven terrain in the road that there wasn't there a month ago always be vigilant when you're riding in general and being aware of the air pollution and the worsened air quality in general that heat brings if you've got respiratory issues and already then this would be a good awareness phase for you to understand that on a, on a motorcycle being exposed to that heat for a long period of time can cause you some breathing issues especially if you get stuck behind traffic and in the summer months i always find that i get stuck in traffic all right i hope with that being said all of y'all stay cool out there ride safe ride smart and i'll see you in the next video